Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm your host, Muhammad Hussain, tuning in from Los Angeles, currently volunteering for Wise Islam Southern California. I would like to welcome you all to the Conference 2020, Islam, the Solution in the Time of Confusion. This will be the final session titled, Even Your Voice Shakes. Please also pay attention to two important links ikna.org slash donation and also baraka the first one is definitely we need your help and support and the second one is you can join us at the receive the baraka from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so my next speaker is i think everybody knows he is a great <laughs> imam and he is a popular we call him imam of america so we know the why he would call him imam of america well let's uh uh, imam siraj bahai is a currently imam of masjid at taqwa everybody knows it's a popular place in the brooklyn new york accepted islam in 1969 he received the imam training at um al Qura university of makkah in 1978 wow imam bahai was the first person to give an islamic invocation to the united states congress imam siraj bahai is also known as imam of, imam of america <laughs> That's the whole thing is. <laughs> Imam Siraj Bahad. Uh, uh, Alhamdulillah. Sadhu wa la ilaha illallah wa ashtuhu la sharika la wa sadhu anna muhammad an abduhu wa rasul amabad. I want to thank all of our, our speakers. So you should know one of my favorite people in the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him, our sister. I want to thank uh, Allah uh, for Ikna and for having convened in this, this conference and all the great work that they do. Um, I want to speak to you for a couple of minutes. You know, I have a I have a lot to talk about, so feel free, brother. You know, to stop me. You may have to you you may have to stop me because I <laughs> have a lot to to speak about. Inshallah. You know, someone once said that the most important knowledge that you can have is the knowledge of yourself, and I do think that the knowledge of yourself is critical. We should know who we are. The Quran talks about who we are as human beings. Uh, the Hadith talks about that. But I would argue that the most important knowledge we can ever have is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am amazed. The more I study the Quran, the more I study tra tra traditions of our Prophet Muhammad alayhi salat wa salam, the more I'm amazed with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now I understand, Ma qadrullah haqqa qadrihi. They have not, you know, made a true estimate in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is incredible. I, I ran out, out of adjectives to describe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The thing that I want to talk about um, um, this evening is based upon an ayah from the Quran. On Yom al Qiyamah, it will be said to us, Ikra kitabaka. Read your record, read your book. Almost every week, wherever I go, in the country, outside of the country, people ask me, Imam Siraj, when are you going to write your autobiography? Imam Siraj, when are you going to write your life story? In a real sense, I am writing my story. All of us are writing our story, and we may have some idea what will be in our book that we're writing right now. One of the books that I recommend, by the way, is the autobiography of Malcolm X. I strongly recommend that, that that we read it but right now we're reading our, our autobiography one thing i have discovered in the quran and obviously i'm not the only one that that's, that's, that have discovered it <clears throat> and in hadith is what the arabs called jumla tur shartiya jumla shartiya and that's conditional sentences and almost it seems like an infinite number of verses and an infinite number of hadith course I'm exaggerating but is filled with replete with conditional sentences let me give you uh, one idea and in the course of my my speech I may give about five or six of these conditional sentences yeah all you who believe if you help Allah, 
Allah will help you and make firm your feet. Of course, Allah don't need our help. But it's implying that if we help in the cause of Allah, as you sort of said and the sister said, a da'wah. Um, if you help Allah, Allah will help you. So you will see all throughout the Quran, all of these conditional sentences and hadith. Getting to know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let me give you another, a couple of ones. Allah mentioned Quran, Thathkuruni athkurkum. Remember me and I remember you. Everyone is always asking the question, what's in it for me? Why should I be Muslim? Why should I make Salat? Why should I fast in the month of Ramadan? Why should I make pilgrimage? Why should I spend my money and make pilgrimage to Mecca? Why should I go to the masjid? Why should I pray five times a day? Why should I do all of this? And two things you have to learn about Allah. Number one, you cannot benefit Him. Nothing that we do. Seven billion, eight hundred million people praying to Allah every day, five times a day or 50 times a day will not benefit Him at all. And number two, you can't harm Allah. You can't hurt Him. You don't take away from his kingdom, you don't add to his kingdom, but we do it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So everything we do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes a notation of it. For man ya'mal mithqala dharatin khayran yura, whoever even does an Adam's weight worth of good shall see it, or an Adam's weight weight of evil shall see it. Conditional sentences. Aisha radiallahu anha said, which to me is amazing, if Allah mentioned Quran, Fath Quruni Afkurkum, remember me and I remember you. There's a hadith uh, that says that if you think about Allah, remember Allah in company, you mention Allah to other people, like we mentioned in Allah now, Allah will mention you in a company better than your company, meaning the angels. If you think about Allah to yourself, how often we do dhikr, we by ourselves, we in our homes, we in our car. We're on the beach, we're in the forest, we're in the woods, we're in the masjid. And we think about Allah. And if you think about Allah to yourself, Allah will think about you to himself. You can't, you can't imagine all these people at the same time, Allah knows exactly what we are doing, what we are thinking, what we are saying. What we are doing. So Aisha radiallahu anha, she said, Kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam The Messenger of Allah remembered the law in every circumstance. All you have to do is get a hadith literature. And you see, the Prophet is always remembering Allah when he eats, when he finishes eating, before he eats, when he put his clothes on, when he takes his clothes off. He's always remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That must mean that Allah is always remembering him. Let me give you um, something that I discovered maybe 25, 30 years ago. It's a hadith, a jumatu sharti, a conditional hadith. And there's plenty of them. And um, ever since I learned it, I've been making this, this uh, dhikra every day. Every day for the last maybe 30 years. And listen to what the Prophet ﷺ, he says, Men qala la ilaha illallah, whoever says there's no God but Allah, la sharika la, he has no partners. Walahul muq, and his is the kingdom. Wahu ala kulli shayin qadir, and he has power over all things. Whoever does that, who says that 100 times in one day. What's in it for me? Let me tell you what the Prophet said, والسلام, he said, Allah will write down for you 100 good deeds. Will take away from you, erase from you 100 bad deeds. Will give you the equivalent of, of setting 10 slaves free. And will protect you from shaitan until the evening. What? All of that? From saying that? When I learned that 25, 30 years ago, I say it every day. Why wouldn't you say it? 
You see all throughout the Quran, the Hadith is this Jumlatul Sharbiya, this is conditional sentence. You know, some people, when they say the Prophet, they don't want to say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He's encouraging us to say Sallallahu peace and blessing be upon him. And listen to what he said. Men Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sallallahu Alaihi Biha, Ashrin. Whoever says Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on me, Allah will uh, give uh, um, praise or, or um, thankfulness to him uh, ten times. Because you can't outdo Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What about other people? The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, He says, Allah will help his slave to the degree that his slave helps his brother. So what am I saying, brothers and sisters? Let me leave you with my, my major point. Right now, the people are suffering. COVID-19, people losing their jobs, people losing their homes, their apartments, people hungry. I cried the other day we were raising money for Gaza when I learned about some of the tragedies in Gaza. I said, you know what? We have to do something. We have to do something about all the people that are suffering. Two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I drove from New York City to Atlanta, Georgia. It's about 900 miles. And right when I was beginning uh, my, my trip in the car, I noticed before I got on the um, highway, there was a man with two prosthetic uh, legs. And he was asking people for money. I called him over to me and gave him twenty dollars. Twenty dollars not going to hurt me, but that twenty dollars would do a lot for him. He was so grateful, so thankful. I didn't ask him his religion. I didn't ask him, you know, were you even religious or what book did you read? Because this is something in the in the human in the human soul. And I learned this about Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You cannot even begin to imagine. Um, his his generosity and I'm gonna bring two witnesses and then I'm gonna finish about how much time do I have let me know how much time about you you can't hear me all right how much time I have Shay? five Fine. minutes okay good let me let me try to um let me try to bring it to a conclusion one of the um, principles of Islam is belief in Yom al, Yom al Qiyamah. You, it's it's everything. It's it's uh, the Prophet peace and blessing be upon him said, "Allahumma la aisha illa aishu al akhira." There's no life except the life of the hereafter. We don't know about this. I don't care how smart you are, how many universities you went to, how many degrees you have. You won't know about the hereafter. Unless the Prophet والسلام, unless Allah mentions it himself in his scripture. And every Prophet talked about Yom Al-Qiyamah. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he makes some, some promises. I'd like to bring to you two witnesses. Uh, number one, you know, all hellfire is not the same. According to the Quran, the Munafiq, the hypocrite, will be in the lowest of the hellfire. More, worse than a kafir. So anyway, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Yom Al-Qiyamah will go to the person least punished in the hellfire. All the hell is not the same. He'll go to the person least punished and ask that person, if you were given everything in the earth, would you ransom that to free yourself from this? Of course, he says yes. But you're not going to know about that until Yom Al-Qiyamah. But when Yom Al-Qiyamah comes, people are going to see. The next one I want to bring is a shaheed, a martyr, a person who gave his life. You, you, what, what more than that? And the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, No one who dies and go to Jannah will want to come back to the earth even though he's given everything in it. Illa shaheed, except the shaheed, a martyr. A martyr will come back. Why? Because he wanted to be slain. He wanted to be killed. He wanted to be murdered ten more times in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because of the great honor that Allah has given to him. What am I saying? Brothers and sisters, you've got to be firm in your faith. 
Promise is based on two things. Number one is based on integrity. Are you honest? Are you truthful? And number two is based on ability. Let me tell you something. I laughed. I told my wife this morning. I laughed. I was listening to a speech of Donald Trump this morning. He was speaking to his, his supporters. And he said, yes, I'm going to create 9 million jobs for black people. I said, really? Yes, and I'm going to create 500,000 businesses for black people. And I'm going to give them access to all of this money. And I laughed because I know politicians. You know the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. I'm almost finished. The sign of a hypocrite is three. When they talk, they lie. According to what the um, Washington Post, they say that the president, since he took office, have told more than 20,000 lies and misrepresentation. When they promise, they break their promise. Many politicians, they get in office, they make these promises and nothing. And when they are untrusted, they violate the trust. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the law, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always keeps his promise. Always. Does he have the ability to raise us up? You bet. So brothers and sisters, what am I saying today? Do all of this good deeds for yourself, for this life, and for the hereafter. Help your brothers and sisters. Help the people. Help the people that are suffering. These people in the United States and the rest of the world are suffering. Then let the Muslims do it. Because it's the right thing to do. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Jazakallah khair, Siraj Bihar. Amazing inspiration.